why aren't we not shaming men? Why is it, Bueller, that when Somali... Because we teach men they can be shameless, they can be, you know, imperfect, but women are supposed to be 101 things. And... <laughs> Gabar Halaga Gursudo, on in Hakas or Don, on in Haka Gursudo, or Hadikale Haba Iskadimataba. Gabar Gur. Question In general, have Somali men let down Somali women? 100%. I feel like for the most yeah. part, I would say yes. Hmm. But I think also the mothers have gone used to it. Like, think about it in the war. The war, a lot of fathers passed away. They got kidnapped, forced to join the military. Yeah. The mothers themselves have actually brought that with them here. The yeah. diaspora have brought that, that. And they have this thing where they're like, they're like okay, well, you know, my, either my father died or my brother got kidnapped and this and this. So they're bringing this stuff with them. So even the mothers are becoming used to it. Yeah. There are some mothers who are hard rock and they're just like, okay, that's cool. Whatever yeah. he left, that's, that's fine. I'll marry another one. Or they might not ever bring another one, right? Yeah. So there's that. And there's also this other thing where there's a, there's a lack of, there's no consequences. For example, the mothers or the, the couples, the Muslim couples here in, at least in Toronto, I'm not sure mm. what happens to other parts in the world, but like we don't really register like a marriage license or anything. Mm. So when you're trying to go to court or whatever, it's a bit, like the man might not be too scared because of, there's no a lot of financial consequences yes. either. Mm -hmm. Like the most, you might get child support. You might, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you have Depending to like, DNA. Yeah, yeah, but then yeah. you have DNA and then that's what I have in the community. Yeah, you have to yeah, go yeah. all this doctors and this and that. So the mothers are like, I'm not taking my husband to, to court because his yeah. family's going to come after me and they're going to ruin my life. Yeah. So I'm just going to take the L, take my kids, and I'm just going to hop and on And just welfare. pray to yeah. God he has and mercy on yeah. you and gives you right? some type of money. So yeah. there's a lot of other issues uh, there too. So upsetting. So Technical why issues. why is it, and going back to shameful, and you brought this up, somebody brought it up here earlier mm -hmm. in the conversation. And here's my question. Why is it, picture this, Somali girl walking down the street in Columbus, Ohio, largely populated Somali uh, community. She's wearing no hijab, shorts, booty shorts, all right? It is nice and hot in the summer. Mm -hmm. She's got booty shorts, looking fat as hell, walking around. There is a, and agree with me here or not, is there a high percentage that a Somali mother or father, an uncle, aunt, whatever, somebody that doesn't even know her will come up to her and say, Am I right? Yes or no? Definitely. Yes. Okay. So there is this uh, inkling, this 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 really strong feeling that you have to protect that girl. You want to tell her the good. You want to you want to and a little bit of shame her as well, right? Yeah. So my question is, why aren't we not shaming men? Why is it Bueller that when Somali men sit in a cafe, right? He's not supporting his kid. He hasn't even, he doesn't even seen his kid for 15 years. He doesn't even like his kids. Everybody out here is acting like a bachelor, but they all have four kids each. How come the other men are not saying, yo, bro, what are you doing? I told you that conversation is too casual. It's like, it's, it's kind of the norm. It's not, there's no, there's not going to be real, any, any real uproar or rise about it. Because we've normalized it's, it. Yeah, that's yeah. it. It became, it yeah. became second nature kind of thing. Wow. Okay. Um, so how do we how do we how do we do this, man? How do we fix this? Another thing before I even get to that. Okay. So in Somalia, the population is approximately eleven million. All right. There is 50.4 percent of the population are women, and forty nine point six are men. For argument's sake, it's pretty equal. It's not a huge deficit. It's pretty equal. And I'm gonna ask you guys because you guys have the initiative. Here we are trying to pass this bill. That's just protecting women. That's all we're trying to do is protect these women's rights uh, and set guidelines. If we're already equal in terms of population, then why are we having such a hard time getting this bill through? It's not like there's more men and they're like, oh, there's only like 20 women in yeah. Somalia. Why do we care? No, it's almost equal. Why are we having such a hard time? I think people just don't want to realize it i feel like they don't want to talk about it and it's kind of like well you don't have to talk about it. you have to do anything you just have to pass the bill yeah it's really all you have to do you know what i mean all that talking all the conversation that we should have have all the things that we should have done are behind us mm -hmm. here's a bill so it doesn't happen again yeah. and it's like i don't i don't know like mm -hmm. where why that's so hard mm -hmm. for people to want that bill or why wouldn't you even if what i was saying before like men believe that we just belong in the, their parameters even if it's just your parameters why wouldn't you want that for your sister that could happen to your sister but no men look at it as 
if it's my sister, my mom, my daughter, they're at home. They're not yeah. doing anything. They're yeah. not, mm-hmm. No. Because we teach men they can be shameless. They can be, you know, imperfect. But women are supposed to be 101 things. And mm. it's because we're not humans to these people. Yeah. We're, we're objects. Yeah. We're, I don't know, we're yeah. property. I, I, don't. I think it also goes back to, I think she said... Um, where if it's like an uncomfortable topic, like we're just not gonna talk about it. You know, there's there's FGM going on, there's this going on. We're just gonna slide it under the rug, like no yeah. big deal. But it, it's it's a huge issue, yeah. and at some point, it's going to catch up to us. Of like, course, I feel like a large portion of people just don't that are, don't want to own up to it. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. That's another thing because not men, just women, even women period. Too. Yeah, women and mm-hmm. like, yeah. period. There's a lot of people that don't want to own up to the fact that it's happening and it's and it's terrible, and yeah. they're like, oh man. Do you feel like equality issues are really embedded in our foundation in terms of culture? And when I say that, um, for instance, and I, you know, my Somali is not the best. I've always said it, but uh, I don't admit it. I act like it's all that in a bag of chips. I'm out here faking it until I survive, right? Um, so whenever I used to say to my mom, so Bueller, I'll use her as an example. I used to say, oh, yo, Bueller, wala gursa da wai. Yo, she always used to say to me, Bueller, mal gursa da nin wai. He's getting married. Mm-hmm. He gets like he marries her. So I can never say, oh, oh, guess what? Queen book while gursado. No, queen book we gursate. Maya. Queen book ala gursate, right? Mm-hmm. And so things like that type of conversation and that type of like um a statement or the way of talking. Another one, I'm gonna play you something. There's another saying. So gabar Guri hakaga jirto ama got hakaga jirto. Mene had an u yahai, Gabar halaga gursudo, onin hakaso don, onin haka gursudo, or hadikale haba iskadimataba. Gabar guri hakaga jirto ama got hakaga jirto. Ama halaga gursudo, ama iskadimato. Sago. I mean, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that specific thing is kind of like embedded in, you know, Western Somali culture Mm because there's different Somali cultures. There's Mm -hmm. the Somali culture in Africa and then in the Middle East and Europe and North America. But the Western Somalis, I think that nowadays school and education and, and getting a good job and a stable career is more important, um, to parent, well, some parents rather than, um, I guess getting married, like for example, my mother, mm-hmm. um, you know, she she personally she wants me to go to school, mm-hmm. finish university, get a really good job, and then inshallah. eventually, you know, inshallah, inshallah get married, yeah. right? So I think that one good thing that helped Somali people when they were kind of forming the diaspora into the West mm-hmm. is that they adopted at least some good values from the West yeah. in terms of education, standing on your own feet before you get married, right? Mm-hmm. So I I can see how that is an issue in Somalia or in the Middle East. Mm-hmm. Like Somali community, mm-hmm. but I'm not sure completely. Like I could totally be corrected. If no, I'm no, wrong. no. This is it's your opinion. Not, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, your experience. It, I don't think that it's a huge prevalent issue with like the whole marriage thing. Yeah. In the West. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and like I said, these are just things that I realized as I was mm-hmm. growing up. Just the the way the statements were even made, right? Like mm-hmm. again, saying like, I'm, I'm being. Acquired like somebody's taking yeah. me as opposed to me taking him. I'm out here like yeah, I'm trying to marry you too. What the hell, mm-hmm. right? Like I'm, I am marrying him, him as well, correct? Mm-hmm. But we can't say it that way. He's marrying me. So I've always been very confused. And viewers, you know, if let us know if you've had these types of conversations or why is it mm-hmm. almost systematically placed like that, right? So um, we're gonna wrap it up. But uh, the big question is, what the hell? Are we going to do? How do we change this? 